Hi, in this video, I'll be talking about electrolytes, electrolyte imbalance, and how to prevent or treat problems with your electrolytes. If you've watched any ads, you've seen that there are ways you can improve electrolyte balance when you're working out, when you're an athlete, you wanna refuel, or when we talk about sick kids, we talk about electrolyte containing fluids. And you may wonder what exactly are electrolytes? I'll answer that question and then get into the other areas. Electrolytes include potassium and sodium, chloride, bicarbonate, phosphorus. These are basically uh, molecules in our body that keep our acid and base balanced and keep everything in our body running just right. We actually, our kidneys work really hard to keep our electrolytes in balance. And so you don't need to worry about helping your kidneys out. Your kidneys, we always said in medical school that the dumbest nephron, that's the part of the kidney, is smarter than the smartest doctor. So your kidneys are really good and so is your liver at getting rid of toxins and keeping your electrolytes in good shape. So we're doing this video because chemotherapy in particular, or surgery, after surgery when you get a lot of fluid, your electrolytes may get a little bit out of whack. They can get severely out of whack or just a little bit out of whack. When you're getting treated and when you're post-surgery or pre-surgery, you'll have blood work done. And electrolytes are some of the things we're looking for. There's quite a range for electrolytes, so there isn't a perfect sodium, there's a range. For example, the lab that I trained with, it was the sodium uh, level of 135 to 145 milliequivalents per liter was normal. And at other hospitals, 140 might be the upper range of normal. So you think, should I eat a low sodium diet or a high sodium diet? Well, again, your kidneys are really good at keeping your sodium at the right level. But what can you do and what might cause problems with your electrolytes when you're undergoing treatment for breast cancer. Well, we give you a lot of fluids during surgery. You'll often get, if you're having reconstruction, you may get three liters of fluid and we try to balance that so it looks as much like normal electrolytes as possible. But it's possible a couple days after surgery, if you've gotten a lot of fluid, that you might have a low sodium. And then what we tend to do is we tend to have you not drink too much free water, meaning water without any electrolytes. So back to these fluids that, you know, these drinks that have electrolytes in them, we will have you limit the amount of just plain water you have and try to have more food that has fluid and electrolytes in it. Sometimes we'll need to balance it out by changing up your IV fluids if you need IV fluids at all but mostly it's just letting things return to normal. And your team in the hospital, if you're hospitalized, will let you know how your diet should be adjusted. When you're an outpatient and you're getting chemotherapy, we will check your electrolytes because not only does chemotherapy have the potential to change your potassium, for example, but some of the other medications you're on for other medical conditions can do that. So if you're on um, a diuretic, for example, for your blood pressure, you may already be on potassium and we'll watch your potassium and see if it needs to be adjusted. If you need to take a little more potassium or maybe go down on your potassium a little bit, or we might change your blood pressure medicine so that you're not on uh, a diuretic and not losing potassium. There are lots of adjustments, your medical team working together with your primary care doctor, the nurses, the pharmacist, and your oncologist will do to make sure your electrolytes stay good. The um, one electrolyte that's important to talk about is phosphorus. Phosphorus is in food that we eat, and in people who are malnourished, phosphorus can go low. What we try to do is just have you eat more phosphorus-containing foods. But if you're quite frail and you have a terrible appetite, you may end up wanting to see a dietitian, a registered dietitian, to find ways you can improve phosphorus and other electrolytes in your body. We do have nutritional supplements, usually in the form of a liquid. You may have heard of, I'm gonna name some brand names, Boost 
or Ensure that might be appropriate to prescribe to you if you're particularly frail and having a hard time getting phosphorus and other electrolytes and nutrients through your diet. In general, your kidneys, liver, and your diet will take care of most problems. When you get started on a new treatment, it's reasonable to ask and your medical team will tell you what to expect and you can ask, are there any changes in electrolytes I should be aware of? How much fluid should I drink? What types of fluid should I drink? And this is where juice can be helpful or even a little bit of a soft drink like uh, ginger ale, which has some electrolytes in it. We try to avoid both artificially sweetened beverages and sweetened beverages for lots of reasons, but this may be a case where we so-called liberalize what you eat and drink. I've covered a lot, you know, the what happens when, in surgery. When we give you lots of fluids, we may need to back off or adjust them a little bit or alter your diet when you're in the hospital. And during chemotherapy, you really want to let your kidneys and liver do what they do best, which is maintain the right pH of your bloodstream and get rid of toxins. You don't have to help your liver out and you don't have to help the kidneys out. I'm going to just make a note about alkalinizing your diet. If you have heard that maybe you want to have more alkaline containing foods, it's actually not what you want to do. It's just going to make your kidneys work harder to get your pH back to that perfect pH that we're all born with and that we want to maintain as naturally as possible. Why give the kidneys extra work if you're already going through a lot? If you want to learn more about what treatment might be part of your treatment plan, visit yerba.com for your personalized report. And if this video has been helpful, click like and subscribe if you haven't already. That helps other people just like you find this video. And if you have a question or a comment, drop it below and we will answer that within the next one to two weeks.